Hello YouTubers. Today is the day we're going to change the oil on my Kyoto CS2410. Just getting everything ready, set up here for it. It says in the book she takes about 3 liters of oil. So this is 3.78 liters of oil cost me about $23 Canadian. Beside it is the oil filter. Believe it or not, that was over $30. $30 for an oil filter. So I'll be searching those out on the internet, see if there's a cheaper source. And I picked up a fuel filter because they say after the first 50 or 100 hours, it's good to change those out as well. Uh, just in case, I mean, another 10 bucks or so, it's uh, worth that than trying to rebuild a diesel engine if it gets dirty. To, so anyway, <clears throat> it's winter time here in Canada, so I got my snowblower on her. That's my luck now snowblower I picked up for her. Three point hitch. I'm gonna have to splice this together because I gotta do it in a couple of parts. I'm on the right side of the uh, of the tractor. Go around the front here, I'll get the hood up. And on the you only got a little three cylinder diesel. And on the right hand side oh, I'm on the right hand side here, near the back, is where the filter is. I'm going to show you that there now. I've got my flashlight here ready. Now, it's kind of hard to get in here, but there's a guard right there. i got the light right on it. There's three bolts. One right there, which you got to get at from the inside. There is another bolt right and then I'm going to be able to show you. There it is there. That's the top of it. It's a triangular shaped one almost. You just follow it around. And there's one down there. Not the big head bolt, but just you just see the treads and the nuts sticking out from underneath there. So I removed the three of those. That's <coughs> where so your oil goes in. But it's kind of hard to see. It's back there full of dust. Just right there. That's the filter that I got to replace. The bright spot of the light is right on it there now. So I gotta get, be able to get in there to change the filter. Now, it doesn't matter which side you go for the drain plug because I just haven't had my cardboard here to lie down on. If you go down under the tractor, right there to the base pan, right there in the base pan, it's like a car engine. There's your plug there for removing the oil. So it's a bit easier to get at than some of the other ones. So that was pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to get to work, set things up here, get my oil put in there, and uh, get back with you then. Okay, so now I've removed the three bolts from that guard. And <coughs> just going to take that up. Take it out. <coughs> that's what it looks like. There's the bolt on the inside there. Now that's a 10 millimeter. That one was a 10 millimeter. That's a 12. So I'm just going to lay that to one side. Over on the bench. The other bolts. There we go. That's the bolt. There's the nut going to it. And now what that does it exposes the whole side of the side of the engine there by taking that shroud off. And that allows me to get in at the filter, maybe, which is right there. So next thing is going to be to drain the oil. I'll set that up and we'll get moving with the next thing. Okay, so before I move the filter. I'm going to remove the oil. Take my flashlight out of there. Uh, to remove the oil, what I like to do first is loosen the cap, even take it off if I want to. Uh, by doing that, um, it allows the oil to flow freer from the from the drain plug below, and it gives it a bit of don't get as much vacuum on it. So I like to remove that first, let it through the way, and then I'm going to go around and take the plug out. And then after we get the 
drain plug out and we drain the oil, then we'll remove the filter. So, over on the other side, it's a 17 millimeter wrench. That'll do this. That's my other spotlight. I gotta get down low. I don't have a tripod. I gotta do this two handed, single handed. So, what you wanna do first is get your 17 millimeter wrench down there, loosen it up, and uh, I've uh, I've already I had to drive the tractor just a short distance, a couple hundred feet, uh, to get over here. It's my drain fan there, just to get here to uh, do the oil change. So she's uh, she's not warm, warm, but she, the engine has warmed up a little bit. I like doing it with the engines a little bit warm because then the oil will flow a good bit freer and just let it drain. So, I just lay that here, 17 millimeter. And just go till that finishes draining, let it drain it good, and then I'll remove the filter. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the filter. Uh, I already made an attempt at it, with a strap wrench. Uh, that's just a knuckle buster. Maybe at that. So, uh, next door neighbor was nice enough to loan me his strap, his uh, oil wrench here. Of course, I had about 10 of them around until I needed one. Anyway, so you get in there. The good thing is, when you get the filter moving and get it out, the oil just falls straight down through. It's not hitting up on anything really on the chassis. Just straight down to the pan below there because there will be oil coming out of this. I've already loosened this up and the oil is out. So you want to take it out. There you go. And uh, I don't know if you can see in there where that goes. I'll try to get the camera down there. It goes on over that treaded in there. Treads in right there. And you want to compare it. Although you got the, they always sell you the, supposedly the right one, but you want to compare it, you know. Check it against to make sure those rings, that gasket is the big thing. Make sure that gasket fits. And when you take off your old one, see this little rubber ring that goes around here? Make sure that comes off with your filter. Sometimes what will happen is those things will separate from the, the can of the filter and it'll stay on to the body of the engine. Especially if they didn't put any oil on this uh, before they put it in last time. Alright, now since this is a diesel engine, never good to run a diesel engine dry. Uh, suggestion is that you uh, pre-prime these filters before you put them on. That just means fill them up with oil, stick it on there as quick as you can before the oil runs out. So, to do that, first thing I got to do is I got to go around the other side and put the drain plug back in. And uh, as I mentioned before, I should have thought of this, uh, you know, I, I take the oil cap off to allow for the flow so that there's no vacuum or anything like that on the engine. Uh, but you could just as easily, here's a dipstick, you could just as easy, probably even safer, just remove the dipstick, just loosen it, and that way then, just up like that way, no dirt can get in your engine either. So I suppose uh, this tractor is fairly clean. She's only used for light duty, but uh, dirtier tractors might have mud and dirt that could fall into the engine. Anyway, let's go over. I'm gonna put the drain plug back in her first. Yeah, a lot of huffing and puffing on my part. Ugh. Okay, the oil's down to a, maybe a drip every couple of minutes. So, I just put this back in, and I checked the, the gasket and everything on that. It's a copper gasket, so it's still good. This is the first time it's ever removed, so it's still in good shape. If it doesn't seem to be, you can always pick up another one. I'm sure they got them in stock. And just, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a torque for this. But uh, the torque I usually use is, uh, <coughs> there, that's the torque, not, uh, but, uh, <coughs> that should be the torque. All right. Whew. Uh, getting up is a chore, sometimes. Now, I'm using uh, 15W40. Is the uh, 15W40 oil? 
So, I try to do this one handed without making too much mess. And that's always fun, of course. True the lens of the camera. Let's see if I'm able to do it. Without making too much mess. Not bad. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's why I did that rag. Man, why does I always do that? Should be using a funnel, I suppose, or something. I'll put it on a rag anyway. Here we go. And I should prime her up. These engines don't take uh, a big lot. It's uh, three liters, and it's a 3.78 liter jug. So that's the old one. I've already drained it out in the uh, in the pan. It's got a drain area. This is the old one. I'm just gonna stick it there so it drains out. Finishes draining out. Clean this one up a little bit and take it over. And it's pre-primed. I'm gonna lay down the phone again for a second. Just let me finish priming this thing off. than I am on the, the filter. Anyway, let's see if we can do this without making too big of a mess. In this case, I know that the ring is well oiled. They always say you should oil that rubber ring before you uh, put it on there. So that's well oiled. Oh yes. Let's see if we can get this on now. If you can get it treading, it'll usually spin on pretty quick. There we go. We're losing too much oil. Out of it, and there we go. Okay. Whew. Now, I'm gonna need another piece of rag. I got that one spoiled. So, that's the drain plug back in first. Filter back on. Uh, instructions say put it in hand tight so that it just meets with the surface, and then three quarters of a turn. So I gotta lay my phone down to do that and uh, I'll finish up with filling her up with oil, okay? All right, boring part over with. Uh, using the uh, two funnels there and the jug of oil, I put just all of it in there. We installed a cap, uh, the filter is in place. Let's just check that oil there now. See where she is on the dipstick. She should be full and where that second circle is, you can see it there, and she's at the full mark. So, now that'll probably change once you run her. I haven't started her yet. So put that back in place. Let's go all the way down. So start her up. Let her run for a second. Neutral. Let's see what she'll do. What you want to do is just check for leaks. Just make sure you don't see any oil dripping down. That way then you know you got everything on tight. She should have been up to pressure by that time. Just letting the oil settle down towards the bottom. I'm going to check it one more time, make sure it's still full. And that's it. Oil change done. Talk to you later.